Good morning all. Uh, my name is Courtney Ford and I'm the Risk Authority Administrator. Welcome to today's webinar being the LPC Technical Bulletin Updates. As advertised, following the recent issue of updated LPC Technical Bulletins, this webinar is to inform the audience of the technical aspects, changes and reasons behind the new updates. Before I introduce our presenter, I just wanted to outline a few housekeeping notes. Um, this is an unprecedented time for all of us. The Risk Authority team are all working remotely and we are at the mercy of technology. So please bear with us as we try to make this as seamless as we can. If you have any technical, IT or sound issues with today's webinar, please use the question panel to the right of your screen and I will do my very best to assist if I can. Please note that during the presentation, all participants will remain in listen only mode. We encourage you to submit questions at any time during the presentation. I note that your questions will not be seen by other members of the audience and they will be passed on to the presenter and addressed, time permitting, at the end of the session. A reminder that all of our webinars are recorded and will, will be available to listen again via the past webinar area on the Risk Authority website along with the presentation slides. And now I'm pleased to hand you over to our presenter for today, Dale Kinnersley. Good morning, everybody. Can, is that OK? Hopefully you can all hear me. Uh, welcome to the 2020 Technical Bulletin update for the Sprinkler Rules. As Courtney's just introduced myself, my name is Dale Kinnersley. I'm the convener responsible for the Sprinkler Working Group uh, with risk, within Risk Authority, which uh, consists of insurer members who supply and contribute to the evolving updated standards based on research, testing and best engineering practices. This webinar is slightly unusual in that um, the release of the new technical bulletin updates hasn't actually been implemented yet um, due to the recent issue of BSEN 12845 Amendment 1 2019. So um, we would like to uh, hope that the new technical bulletin issues will be out to you all this month. And as um, shown on my screen, they are both available in uh, PDF and hard copy so they're currently being printed and with a bit of luck you should be receiving these um at the end of well towards the end of this month uh, and like i say the webinar but is a presentation just to give you a summary of where we are and what we're up to at this moment in time so moving on the aims of this webinar is to provide you background information on the new 12845 and as you can see there there is a new um, BSCN 12845 standard that's just come out, which is the A1, which is a new amendment, which came out at the end of March 2020. Significant technical bulletin updates. So we have made some uh, changes to um, high hazard um, processes and high hazard storage areas. Some minor modifications to the technical bulletins, which you'll find these are just mistakes or uh, corrections. And the idea of this and the aim of this webinar is to highlight and explain some, some key changes. So from this webinar, the duration is expected to be around 45 minutes. Questions can be submitted throughout this, the course of the webinar. Time permitting, obviously, um, if we, uh, we don't manage to get through this uh, and have enough time to answer questions, um, please submit these via the website to technical at the fpa.co.uk uh, and what we've been doing at recent webinars is we've collated all the questions, put them all in one answer and issued these on our website as well as we will email you back any queries that you have uh, with, the, with the, uh, the answers. This um, risk authority webinar is also accredited by the Chartered Insurance Institute. And anybody participating in today can claim 45 CPD minutes towards the Chartered Insurance Institute membership scheme. So you are CPD accredited. So a little bit of background, um, as you can see there, the first sprinkler head in 1864, and this uh, the need for sprinklers arose as the insurance companies developed. Both um, improve economic efficiency, specifically the reduced consequences and losses from fire. Originally motivated by the need to protect high value stock large scale stock and processes so we're talking about the warehousing industry back in the day uh, and as we don't know when or when a fire will start sprinkler stations must sit idle for long periods of time which is an extraordinary design challenge 
and it also emphasizes the need for sprinkler systems to be serviced and maintained so they are ready for operation as soon as there is a uh, a need for them to uh, contribute to effective firefighting the development of the sprinkler rules started in the fire offices committee and they published the first set back in 1888 many of you will understand that from the foc rules if you've been in the industry long enough um, the loss prevention council later took over this from the fire offices committee and the lpc the loss prevention council is actually part of the fire protection association these standard rules that were developed back in the day are still the basis of most global standards and they have evolved uh, ever since their inception so as i mentioned just foc which was the fire offices committee started with the 27th edition the 28th edition and the 29th edition uh, rule book However, in 1990, uh, BS 5306 started in 1979 and replaced these in 1990 with the LPC rules editions, which was the technical bulletins. Um, back in 2003, 12845 was introduced and we've had many versions right up until today's version, the 2019 plus the LPC rules edition, which is what today's uh, webinar is aimed to give you a little bit more information. And also, the new EN 12845 is currently being developed. So 12845 has just been um, issued uh, at the end of March this year as a standard, uh, the 2019 standard. But for the last eight years, as an actual standard, it has been currently being worked on by the British Standards Committee and the SEN Committee. And we haven't yet been given a date for this to be issued out, but we are hoping 2020, 2021, uh, the new EN 12845 will be issued out to uh, everybody. And some bodies that are involved today, as I just mentioned, the European Committee of Standardization, known as SEN, they produced the EN 12845 by committee, and they are currently updating this standard as we speak. The British Standards Institution, the BSI, they adopt the BS part of the EN 12845 and the National Forwards and the National Annex. And the Fire Protection Association and Risk Authority, we publish the LPC rules with input from insurers, the sprinkler industry and other stakeholders. And that makes the whole book, the whole standard, the LPC sprinkler rules, which incorporates the BS EN 12845. And these are seen as loss prevention and best practice standards for the protection of property, addition to the protection of life. Some acronyms. We just thought we'd run through these because these are still um, confused. People still get confused with them. So the LPC rules is understandably often confused with the LPCB. They are separate bodies. The LPCB, LPC, sorry, is the Loss Prevention Council. They are the rules that are published and funded in association through risk authority by the FPA. And the LPCB is the Loss Prevention Certification Board, which is a third party accreditation and certificate body, which is part of the BRE. They are seen as improvement. So the FPA and Risk Authority produce the rules and we're trying to improve them and supplement the requirements of the BS standard, which is a life safety standard. And we're trying to supplement these with significant, significant technical contributions from the sprinkler industry and insurers. And these, are, these changes and these technical bulletins are based on research and case study experience of real world fire events, uh, lessons learned and are seen as uh, continuous improvements. So what I was just going to run through now is just a short list of the technical bulletins that we've modified recently. So we have TB203, TB206, 7, and so on until TB234. So there are eight changes to the technical bulletins in this latest issue that you should be receiving this month. So in summary, a quick summary of them is obviously uh, TB203, we've included electronic arms, the electronic alarms are um, now common in office blocks and where control valve sets are located below ground, below ground instead of mechanical alarm gongs. Um, confirmation of an independent annual inspections, um, which references the new amendment A1 2019 of an edition of the 12845. So there's a new clause 21 and this supplemented this with a new annex Q. And clarification on the 25 year pipe inspection testing. Um, which is um, Annex K. I mean, many pipe testing queries that come through the um, inquiries website with regards to uh, sprinkler systems is how many uh, pipes should be inspected 
how many pipes in other words what is a meaningful sample so we'd like to confirm that uh, we have now decided within risk authority what a meaningful sample is of pipes to be tested and how they should be tested tb206 is just an update so there is some new risk authority documents and an insurance version of adb for passive fire protection and fire resistant values this has been uh, all we've done with tb206 is updated these references tb207 we've updated the sprinkler head selection for high hazard classifications that covers both high hazard process and high hazard storage removal of uh, tb209 which is esfr so we've removed lightweight uh, tissue paper from esfr systems and we've clarified the flu width requirements for both longitudinal and transverse flus because there was a slight bit of um, complication added complication with regards to if any obstructions were allowed within these uh, these clear air flus tb225 well it's pretty straightforward it's a brand new technical bulletin utilizing esfr sprinklers within racking TB229, um, it's pretty much flushing valves located at high level. Um, they're not being used or inaccessible. Therefore, these have uh, been confirmed where they need to be located in accordance with 12845 requirements. And the other uh, three are just a few corrections. TB232 is the inclusion of fire and rescue service inlets, similar to the ESFR and school requirements and more work in TB234, which is the storage of high hazard um, goods. So we've confirmed um, exclusion lists. We've conf confirmed where the beam, uh, where the sprinkler heads need to be in relative to the beam deflection. Um, we've changed a slight bit of wording and we'll come on to the other reasons why that is. Um, uh, areas of differing density, there's confusion on site with regards to what should be and what isn't at this moment in time, so it can affect the hydraulic performance of a sprinkler system, so we've added a little bit more information into that. Inclusion of ST5 and ST6 from 12845 into TB234 because there has been numerous emails emailed to us from uh, industry with regards to what the difference is between ST5 and 6 and ST15 and 16. So we've hopefully clarified the differences between these two. And following a bit of research, uh, we've removed seven and a half mil design density for all new high hazard systems. So that's a summary of the changes that we're going to try and cover over the next uh, 45 minutes. So moving back onto TB203. Um, as mentioned just there's many office buildings in major cities they're moving mechanical alarm gongs architects don't want to see them there's, they're, they're in positions where they, they, they can't be seen um, valve sets are being located down below basements and there's a limitation on the pipe run to the mechanical alarm gongs there's drainage of water issues below ground so um, fire uh, um, alarms uh, systems are now incorporating electronic alarms on uh, in, in, in lieu of mechanical alarm gongs and where this um, is done in London um, or Birmingham or Manchester in the office blocks, um, it's just confirmation in TB203 that um, it should be tested on a weekly basis. So it's pretty straightforward. The mechanic, where, where no mechanical alarm has been fitted and an electronic alarm has been installed in lieu of this position, in lieu of this mechanical alarm gong, weekly testing should be covered for an electrical alarm as well as there is for a water motor alarm gong. And um, following complaints by the UK industry through BSI to SEN, uh, and this is the reason for the new BSCN 12845 uh, 2015 plus Amendment 1 2019, um, confirmation who should be carrying out independent sprinkler inspections. Now, following a review with uh, the insurers and risk authority, it's been confirmed that inspections shall still remain independent and it is not desired for competing sprinkler contractors to mark the homework of others or indeed mark their own homework for, for confirmation or compliance to the standard. Therefore, uh, in TB203, we have taken on board the requirements of Annex Q, which is a recommendation, not a requirement. And we've also taken on board the uh, new clause 21 and confirm 
that sprinkler inspections shall still be independent and not be undertaken by sprinkler contractors. This is our new um, TB203, which confirms that, um, confirming who the qualified person is. It's a designated individual, suitably trained, competent through knowledge with experience of all aspects of LPC sprinkler rules, um, and also uh, be able to perform practical tests if required. It cannot be, as uh, stated in the second period there, a competing installer uh, or competing service and maintenance provider. So LPC sprinkler systems should be independently inspected, not by sprinkler contractors. Um, and again, undertaken by an independent suitably qualified body in the commentary and recommendation, and still the remaining insurers for their commercial and underwriting purposes cannot be assumed to fulfil the intent of this requirement. Um, moving on, TB203, pipe work and Annex K. Um, the insurance industry are struggling at this moment with poor reporting, um, with little or no evidence confirming that pipe work has been inspected. But so um, we've also witnessed this in sprinkler reporting uh, when we've done our independent inspections um, for systems over 25 years and uh, deterioration of pipe work. So we have now modified. TB203 and updated it uh, in relation to Annex K, which confirms what a meaningful sample of pipe work is. Uh, we've written the clause, restructured it to suit. So the idea is that we don't find, or, or this is the kind of inspection, um, as you can see in the photographs below, that is required for pipe work over 25 years, photographic evidence. So the new clause is a minimum, a one metre length of each pipe diameter within each installation. So if you have five installations, you will need to inspect five installations and from each area of the building. This is because there is different environments and conditions where pipes are installed within a building. These, these could affect the rate of corrosion and deterioration of the pipe work. So we've got areas, uh, for example, office areas ceiling voids, plant rooms, external areas, warehouse areas, underside of exposed roof structures. We are asking or we are requiring that all pipe work shall be visually inspected internally and externally for the presence of any foreign bodies or evidence of microbial activity. So sprinkler installers, what this will mean is you will physically in each installation select the pipe work in each diameter of the area of a building remove it and do a visual in, internal and external um, view of the pipe work to, for looking for evidence of microbial activity or corrosion. You shall then photograph the evidence of each pipe inspected, confirm where it's been uh, the location of it and write a report. It is, that, is, that is the requirement of the standard that a report is written on the condition of the pipe work internally and externally. Um, should there be any further uh, findings or any foreign matter of pipe corrosion, then, a, then it can be sent away for further analysis at an independent test laboratory. So that is the new requirement that supplements Annex K and has been rewritten into TB203. We've also noted in there that um, some reports are coming through using NDT testing uh, and also um, small samples of pipe work are being sent away, which was not the intent of the uh, original Annex, uh, Annex K. So um, corrosion um, of sprinkler pipe work commonly appears as pinhole leaks as shown in the photo there. Um, and you can see other microbial activity and sediment that's inside the pipe work there, which leads to corrosion. We are uh, confirming that NDT ultrasonic testing and small pipe samples, um, where we're just taking small samples of the pipe wall, um, this kind of testing does not assess any internal blockage of the pipe work. Uh, so it's not considered a comprehensive enough um, assessment of the overall condition of the pipe work. So this is a new requirement in TB203 for 25 year pipe testing. As mentioned uh, in the summary earlier, uh, TB206, um, there has been some recent updates um, to risk authority um, um, 
documentation and as you can see there we have the essential fire principles fire protection of buildings uh, bottom right is the insurers approved document b for fire safety and these have been updated and i believe uh, we are currently updating uh, approved document b fire safety with insurers requirements so that will be um, out later this year and the references in tables uh, tables one and tables two of tb206 reference older documentation so TB206 has only been updated in terms of reference to these tables. The fire resistance, passive fire resistance uh, requirements of the standard have not changed. It's just the reference in TB206 that has been changed. Moving on to TB207. TB207, so we have updated table one. And this table shows changes to the high hazard process and high hazard storage sprinkle head selection and the amendments um, have led to changes in design density uh, which supplements tb234 changes which we'll come on to later for the additional hydraulic benefits so under the new table one high hazard process starts at seven and a half mil and for this particular in this particular instance you can choose to use a k80 or a k115 sprinkler um, 10 and 12 and a half mil it's k115 or 160. for high hazard storage you will notice in the design density table that it starts at 10 mil a minute so from 10 mil a minute to 12 and a half it's k115 sprinklers 12 and a half above 12 and a half to 18 it's k160 that doesn't change and nor does uh, densities over 19 millimeters a minute this 240 uh, k factor sprinkler where storage is involved, as noted in the bottom, in a high hazard process risk, please refer to the high hazard storage requirements for the correct head type. So if you've got a high hazard process building, but you've got storage within it, the selection of the head should be based on high hazard storage, not high hazard process. Reasons for this are the hydraulic benefits of 20 mil heads in terms of spray patterns and droplet size and velocities are significant in terms of controlling or suppressing fires. So therefore, using this research that's been carried out 20 mil sprinkler heads are preferred for high hazard process risks but as the table allows you can use k115 uh, k, k80 still and for high hazard it's a requirement that the minimum head size is 20 mil so what does this mean in terms of flow it means if you had a seven and a half mil existing density with a head at nine square meters, there's a requirement of 67 liters a minute. If you were to change this based on minimum head pressure to eight um, at the bottom, there would be a 20% increase in flow. Based on um, just minimum head pressure, so you've got head areas less than seven, uh, I think it's 7.6 square meters, um, it'll automatically work on the sprinkler head, uh, minimum head pressure. It could be a 42% increase in flow. So we are increasing the flow rates, which will have an impact on water supplies, but we'll come to this later on in TB234 when we give you the reasons why design densities have changed from seven and a half to 10 mil a minute. But it does mean an increase in flow of between 20 and 42%, all dependent on um, head spacings. Moving on to TB209, which is um, ESFR sprinklers. The original document allowed for obstructions and rack structure within transverse flues of up to 70, uh, so provided that there was 75 mil clearance, which is pretty much unachievable in most um, storage configurations. So therefore, there's been a change to the requirement, making sure that transverse flues have a net clear width of 75 mil, and if there is anything in there, but there pretty much isn't, there shouldn't be anything in a transverse flue and longitudinal flue shall maintain 150 mil with, a, again, with anything in there. And the um, diagram there shown as TB209 figure two confirms that all we've done is removed the requirement and just given a little bit more clarity to the wording. So there is a minimum clearance requirement for an ESFR system within racking and down the longitudinal flow of 150 mil, inclusive of um, excluding, sorry, um, obstructions. So if you've got obstructions in there, you've still got to maintain 150 mil around the obstructions and within the transverse flow, 75 mil. 
There is also a removal of lightweight and tissue paper from TB209 based on the issues surrounding the fire load and protection of these papers. So uh, both NFPA and FM Global have removed them from the protection. Um, and what we have done is modified tables one, four and eight within TB209 to suit. So the new TB209 will have removed lightweight and tissue paper from the standard. And um, protection of these should be therefore discussed and agreed with your insurer and the authorities having jurisdiction prior to selecting any other form of uh, fire protection for uh, lightweight paper and tissue paper. We've just removed them following uh, the requirements and the testing that's been done in America from our standard similar to NFPA and FM Global. This now leads on to um, TB225, which is a new uh, technical bulletin, which is to supplement TB209, which is ESFR and TB234, high hazard storage. Um, there is a, a mistake there on the implementation date. This is from the 1st of June, so the new standard that you will get, say, will, uh, the implementation date will be from the 1st of, uh, of June 2020. And this is um, based on uh, sprinkler development in the last few years, uh, research into NFPA and FM. The development of TB225 as an as a store, ESFR within storage racking um, was missing from our standards. Uh, it's becoming more popular in the UK um, and being recommended under obviously NFPA and FM standards and the uh, current insurers, members of risk authority have recognised that we have uh, this area of protection missing following um, um, a review. Therefore, we've developed this standard, and this standard is strictly in accordance with NFPA and FM uh, following testing that they've done. So we haven't deviated from the requirements of it, but we've included it in TB225. And as you can see there, it, it covers storage configurations of ST4 palletized beam packet, pallet, pallet racking <coughs> and ST8 beam pallet racking and flow through racking. And commodities that are being stored are similar to, well, exactly the same as what's in TB209. One thing you will notice from the standard, though, as a um, um, sprinkler uh, contractor uh, and user of uh, the sprinkler standards, is the location of sprinklers is not in accordance with what we would normally see within beam pallet racking. You will see that um, on single row racks up to 900 mil watt width, uh, sprinklers are going to be located centrally uh, and then as you increase the width of racking you are looking at face sprinklers staggered uh, these are all covered depending on where they are in relation to a wall um, and the width of the racks so it's a, you have got longitudinal sprinklers in the flue but you've also got face sprinklers as well this follows the guidance and the uh, research done under NFPA and FM uh, which covers obviously double single double row and multiple row racking and flow through racking there. The stars there are indicative of um, locations where the most remote sprinklers are in terms of calculations to assist designers when doing calculations. So the inclusion of TB225 sprinkler racking allows for higher buildings to be sprinkler protected using ESFR, uh, ESFR technology. Uh, and you do this by zoning the levels of protection within the racking. So it's not limited to one level of sprinkler protection within the racking. You could have two levels, three levels of sprinkler protection in the racking and they are zoned per installation. There is also the additional benefit to providing roof sprinkler protection either as ESFR to control all the, all, the, all the storage above the last level of in-rack or depending on how much storage is above that top level of in-rack um, you could use this by using uh, control mode density area uh, based on requirements of TB234. The tables that are used within this, uh, this new standard are common within TB209. The top table there, table three, gives you uh, the um, design basis for hydraulic calculations on the different configurations which we've just gone through from figure one to figure seven how many heads are involved and how many racks are involved and table four is common to the requirements commodity requirements within tb209 
uh, and they just confirm the maximum level that you can protect of racking based on that commodity classification, confirming which K, K factor head, the flow rate and the minimum pressure. So in summary, TB225 allows for the use of ESF technology, ESF technology within racking. It allows for roof system to be determined from the storage level above the top level of ESFR. So like I say, it can be ESFR sprinkler system above that top level of inracks, or it can be control mode based on a density over an area under TB234. It allows for taller storage building arrangements. It provides better hydraulic requirements as each system is calculated individually. That's another benefit of the ESFR in racks. You only calculate for one operating at either the roof or the racks, whichever has the bigger hydraulic demand. It supplements and references both TB209 and TB234, and it's based and researched through NFPA and FM. So those are the benefits of ESFR, if it can be applied to the warehouse. But again, as mentioned earlier, all systems should be agreed with the insurers. Moving on to TB229, which is a straightforward um, change really. Um, flushing valves, as mentioned earlier, usually left up at high level, uh, unused. Um, therefore, it was just a, re a requirement to correct this. So the flushing valve access accessibility now uh, shall be left above floor level and comply with clause 15.4. Clause 15.4, as I've put in there from EN 12845, confirms that flushing valves now shall be no more than three meters above floor level and fitted with a suitable plug so that they can be used for flushing uh, inspections. So that was just a correction within TB229. Another correction in TB229, table two currently, um, as you may find in your book, just mentions where I'm pointing, where the arrow's pointing there, it just mentions wet systems. Um, it was a mistake, pre-action should have been in there because a pre-action system is classed as a wet system as the, um, as we all know through uh, hist history, that wet systems are pre-armed with water, ready for fire. Um, so, it was a mistake. It's now been corrected to include pre-action. Uh, another correction. So under TB2293.21, um, in fact, I've just spotted another mistake. Uh, that table should be table 11, not table 9. So uh, we've just corrected the table number. That's all there is in terms of uh, corrections in TB229. Moving on to TB232, so this is a water supply enhancement. It's to make the water supply more robust and allow the fire brigade the option to confirm feeding, uh, to, well, to confirm whether they're going to feed the system uh, as the water supply duration deteriorates. So it's very, it's, it's very much a, a copy of what's in TB209 and TB221. Um, in the fact that we are now including as a requirement that all sprinkler installations are supplemented via a um, inlet, fire brigade inlet. So um, similar to what's already done, an appropriately sized and housed fire and rescue service breach and inlets conforming to, to feed the system shall be connected to the distribution main. So for um, light and ordinary hazard, it can be a two-way and for high hazard, it needs to be a four-way 150 mil. Um, and it shows there on the diagram, the connection where it needs to feed into the system. So for fire brigade, they can um, enhance the water supplies to provide a little bit more time as the water supplies deteriorate whilst fighting a fire. Just an additional requirement um, for a little bit more system robustness. TB234, so this is where we've modified the technical bulletins um, and given a little bit more information. So with regards to this first one, this is confirmation that when the beam is fully, a sprinkler beam, is a storage beam in standard racking is fully loaded, the deflector shall be a minimum of 10 millimetres below for clearance, so provide um, spray clearance. So the 25 mil design clearance was allowed to allow it was was um, to allow for a, an element of beam deflection. However, following many site surveys uh, conducted by both the FPA when they're doing independent inspections and um, 
insurers doing their inspections, the beam deflection is normally lower than this and it blocks the spray pattern of the sprinkler. So within the 25 mil design allowance, it's now important for the design engineer to understand the weight loadings, work out the beam deflection and ensure that 10 mil clearance below the beam is allowed for the sprinkler deflector to provide adequate spray to cover the stock below. TB234, other changes as well. So in the beginning of the document, it tells you what the um, storage configurations TB234 covers but it doesn't tell you what it does not cover. So we've added a list in there of general, it's not an exhaustive list, but it gives you an idea of the types of standard uh, storage configuration that is being seen in warehousing up and down the country that is being sprinkler protected using TB234 and being adopted to suit. So um, it doesn't fully comply with the requirements as tested and researched for the solutions within TB234. Therefore, uh, an exclusion list now covers what TB234 doesn't cover. And the recommendation is that if you come across any other storage uh, arrangement that's not covered by TB234 or falls into this list, you should then consult the insurers and any other stakeholders on how to sprinkler protect these. They may decide to use an NFPA or FM solution, but what we can't be using is adopting a standard to make it fit a certain storage configuration. So this requirement came in just so that it now incumbent on the sprinkler contractors to make early um, consultation with the authorities to find out, work out and come up with a storage solution that doesn't fit within TB234. Moving on from that, just following TB234 through, um, We've changed the wording solution um, in TB234 4.2 because a solution implies that this is a confirmed and tested means rather than a recommendation. So it is um, just, there's no change in terms of um, permitted storage height, excessive clearances. The wording um, solution has just been replaced with option because it is an option. It's a recommendation on how to protect it. It doesn't follow any testing either in the UK or uh, internationally at this moment in time. It is, an it is an option to protect it that way. Uh, another change uh, and another finding within the insurance industry is uh, insurers are seeing more ST1 block storage located against racking type storage, ST4, um, within storage warehousing. Um, Clearly, and it's stated in TB234 that there should be a 2.4 meter separation between differing storage configurations. However, this isn't always achievable. And where this is not achievable, um, what we are now saying is that um, hydraulic calculations must take into account fire spread from different types of storage configurations. So where you've got an ST1 up against an ST4 and a fire potentially starts in ST1, that fire could then transfer into the racking and set off additional sprinklers within the racking. It also, due to storage heights, uh, exceed excessive storage heights, the density over the ST1 could be 17 and a half, 20 mil a minute, as opposed to the 10 mil plus in racks next adjacent. So we're now making sure that um, the um, design engineer doing the system calculations takes into account if there is the potential for differing storage arrangements to uh, simultaneous op operate through fire transfer from one storage arrangement to the other. You've got to uh, cover all hydraulic um, outcomes and also discuss and agree this with the insurers and any other rel rel uh, relevant authority of jurisdiction. jurisdiction. Um, so the original clause, uh, paragraph one and paragraph three, as can be seen there, have not changed. There is a new paragraph in the middle there, which confirms this um, situation that's currently being seen on site. However, there is also the inclusion of the um, diagram and a commentary and recommendation. But as, as just described there, should this storage on the right-hand side as ST1 block storage be closer than that, the hydraulic calculations for the roof over both systems, roof and rack and roof over um, transient storage areas 
needs to take into account the potential for fire spread to the racking and setting off additional sprinklers. So that's a new change there, what we've covered. We've also included ST5 and ST6 into TB234 to avoid the confusion uh, between ST15 and ST16. I've had inquiries from uh, contractors and the industry, what is the difference between the two? Uh, so it's now been included um, and a couple more slides in a bit will give you a, a, hopefully a little bit more uh, information. So SD15, wording's just been changed in terms of example storage configuration. So it's lower challenging, challenge shelving in beam pallet type racking and ST16 is the same. ST5 is just solid or slatted shelves, one meter or less wide or one meter and no more than six meters, which is covered in EN12845. So we've added it in at the end of TB234. Um, as, as we discussed earlier in TB207, the selection of sprinkler heads. So the, the TB207 has now changed the selection of sprinkler heads. And following research from NFPA uh, finding on site, design densities in excess of seven and a half mil are becoming more common. So higher densities with larger sprinkler heads are proved to control fires quicker and suppress the fire size. Therefore, it's been decided that there is only a minimal increase, which we mentioned earlier, in water supply size to go to 10 mil a minute. So it is now a requirement that all high hazard storage systems to go to 10 millimeters a minute, which also allows for uh, permitted storage heights to be increased. So in line with the changes to TB207, there's a minimum design density now for storage configurations. However, legacy systems, which we've covered in commentary and recommendations, so we're not, notwithstanding existing systems and extensions, um, it is permissible to match existing areas at seven and a half with seven and a half as you have you um, as your current design now all new installations from scratch should be 10 millimeters a minute um, which is covered in the table so on the left hand side there the 2018 version there we've changed maximum allowed and changed to permitted so there was just a slight correction in the, uh, in, the in the written text all seven and a half mil has been removed from the tables in tb234 and this the wording solution at the bottom so there's been a change to the tables Solution's been removed for option. Maximum allowed has been changed to permitted, which was just a, a slight mistake, which was found from the, uh, the last updates. And seven and a half mil a minute has now been removed from the standard. TB234 configurations. So um, what we've tried to do there is we've added in to both ST15 and 16, and you'll see in, uh, on the next slide, ST5 um, and 6 that we've included sketches to differentiate the difference between um, ST15 and 16 and ST5 and 6. So ST15 and 16 is solid or slatted shelving within beam pallet racking. Uh, and hopefully the uh, diagrams and the sketches there indicate the difference. Uh, this is the new one for solid or slatted shelving ST5 and ST6. So as you can see, the differences with ST5 and 6, it's movable uh, shelf type storage and included in tb234 are the storage configurations um, which is an which is identical to what the requirements with regards to um, calculations for number of heads operating number of rows maximum distance maximum sprinkler spacings this has been covered and now in tb234 those are the uh, list of all the updates with hopefully a little bit more information on what you uh, are so you've got a bit more understanding as said the the technical bulletin updates we hope will be issued to you like i say they're at the publishers at the moment by the end of this month um if anybody has any questions i noticed now we are running out a bit of a time but if anybody would like to uh, send any questions in uh, we will answer these and email you straight back um, or we will put these in a, um, a table, put all the questions down and put them on the website. So in closing for the um, update and the webinar, 
So the LPC rules for automatic sprinklers is a highly effective specification. It's proven to work and the estimates of sprinkler reliability based on people following these rules and the operable, operability of sprinkler systems out there in the marketplace is between 92 and 98 percent effective. We uh, aim to continue to provide a specification which provides first rate levels um, at reasonable cost. Yes, we understand that there is going to be slightly increased service and maintenance costs for the new requirement of pipe selections. Um, uh, sorry, TB203 pipe inspections. We also understand that there's going to be a slight increase in water supplies, but this is minimal in, in the overall cost of the uh, installations. We'd like to thank the ongoing support of you as the users uh, of the standard. I'd like to thank all the parties who have contributed to these, uh, these changes in 20 edition, especially the insurers um, uh, part of my working group. I'd like to thank them especially for their contribution. Um, LPC rules, hopefully um, the FPA have current been contacting everybody to give them the latest updates, confirm that there is a new EN 1284529 standard as well as the technical bulletin update. So there's a significant issue that we are going to be providing you guys. Um, but if you've got any queries with regards to the standards, both PDF and hard copy, please phone the, the office or contact us via the sales at the fpa.co.uk. Any technical questions with regards to this, um, please send in at technical at the fpa.co.uk. And finally, uh, on behalf of myself and Risk Authority, I'd like to thank you all for listening to the technical bulletin updates. Thank you.